Uh, so let's summarize the network flow problems that we talked about so far and uh, introduce another one, one more type in this chapter called generalized network flow uh, problem. Uh, so, so far we talked about network flow problems and we distinguished transshipment, shortest path, transportation and assignment. And you see, uh, actually transshipment is just another name for a network flow problem. Transshipment problem is just another name for network flow uh, problem. Uh, because you see, uh, any network flow is, is uh, can be called a transshipment problem. Uh, now, if you th if you remember, shortest path was a, a, a special case. So if you go to the right here in this uh, gr this uh, chart, you get a special case of a, a model or a problem t on the left. So shortest path was a special case. What was so special? Instead of having multiple units shipped, we only had one unit of supply and one unit of demand. But everything else in the shortest path was the same as in a transshipment problem, right? Uh, we had another special case of the transshipment which was transportation and the restriction here was different. Uh, when in shortest path we had one unit of supply, one unit of demand, here we didn't restrict that. We said still we have multiple units in transportation, in the Tropic Sun example, multiple units of, of supply, multiple units of demand. However, we restrict the structure of the network. We don't want to have any locations of the nodes, we just want to have uh, a set of nodes on the left right, uh, saying uh, the, the, the that are sources of units and the set of nodes on the right uh, that are things, that are that have demands, right? And these, this was what we call the bipartite network. So whenever you have a transshipment with a bipartite network, all supplies on the left, all demands on the right, and connections are only left to right, it becomes a transportation problem, and you saw that it actually can be solved in Excel in a much easier way than the transshipment problem, because it has this, it, the, the variables and the costs can be put in a two-dimensional table. Uh, and then we said assignment is actually a special case of transportation because it has the same network except that uh, now the not multiple units uh, are transported from every node but from every node we transport one unit and every uh, sink has one unit of demand so uh, when we were assigning jobs or workers to jobs we said uh, workers are nodes with one unit of supply jobs are uh, nodes with one unit of demand and it looked like transportation except that those numbers, uh, supply demands, were only one everywhere, right? Notice that in all those problems that we considered so far, right, whether they are more general or more special, um, the, the solutions were always guaranteed to be integer if all parameters in the constraints are integer, meaning all the supplies and demands were integer and all lower and upper bounds on variables were integer. In most cases we had just lower bound zero and no upper bound, which also qualifies uh, here for integer optimal solution, right? We I want to talk about one more problem in this chapter, which is generalized network flow. Now, the name suggests it is a generalization of what we talked about so far, right? It's a generalization of the transshipment. And so there will be something extra introduced, no restriction, but uh, like a relaxation of the uh, way we can formulate the problem, right? In all cases, they were still within linear programming. So all of this is still linear programming. Uh, and I'll talk about generalized network flow problems in a moment, but first I want to mention one more example that you have in uh, in, uh, in the chapter, which is the equipment replacement problem in the, in, sorry, in the textbook, uh, the chapter 5 of the textbook. Uh, if you notice, uh, you see, the, the even the problems that we talked about, like let's say assignment or shortest path, they might not look like a network flow immediately, but they are actually network flow problems. So it shows you that network flow uh, models are, have a very um, can be uh, have very large uh, scope of applications, right? And there is another example shown in the uh, chapter five of the textbook uh, that is called equipment replacement problem, which is actually a shortest path problem if you define it properly. Um, what I want to say about it is that you shouldn't worry when you read the textbook and we read about this problem. You shouldn't worry about uh, understanding exactly how they calculated the cost because the costs are very complicated in this problem, all you should understand is why it actually can be modeled as a shortest path problem, right? And, and it actually can be modeled as a shortest path transporting a unit from now to a unit to a node that represents four years uh, from now. Uh, uh, 
Now, about the generalized network flow model. Uh, what we introduce here is that we might have gains or losses uh, on uh, some of the arcs or all of the arcs sometimes. Uh, you see, in certain applications we experience gains when we have a flow of uh, units on some kind of um, uh, virtual or, or some kind of arcs in a network, we experience gains or losses. An example of gain is when you have an interest or dividends on, on an investment, right? When you put $100 and there is an interest 5%, let's say, per year, a year from now you have 5% more. So a kind of starting amount of flow is $100 and ending amount of flow is, is $105, 5% more. There is a gain here, right? Um, an there's more examples of losses you can think about, for example leakage uh, in pipelines or some imperfections in raw materials, right, or some trim uh, when you, let's say, you use some wood to produce furniture, you'll always have some trim and this is a waste, so you had maybe um, a, a ton of material, you really effectively use only a fraction of it, maybe 80 or 90 percent and the rest is trim. There might be also some spoilage of food during transit, for example, if you transport bananas over a long distance, some of them will, will, ri will ripen during transit and you have to expose of them uh, or there might be theft or other types of losses, right? Regardless of whether this is loss or gain, we can, we can express this using one more parameter called yield, okay? Yield will ha be expressed by a symbol AIJ and yield for an arc I to J will be put you see, an, as an additional parameter next to an arc, in addition to having a cost, we'll also put the yield. Yield will be a number just next to the end of the arc, next to the, 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 the arrow of the arc, right? And what we will mean by this is that uh, when there is a flow on this uh, arc from I to J, what, what flows out of node I, right? So the units flowing out of node I on this arc are Xij. Xij will actually mean units flowing out of I. But what arrives is Aij times Xij. So what, what arrives here into node J is what, what will left I multiplied by this Aij, right? And you see, uh, if Aij is, for example, 1.05, it means there is a 5% gain. So whatever flows out, 5% uh, more arrives into node J. And if AIJ is less than 1, for example, if AIJ is 0 0.9, then it means there is a 10% loss because whatever flows out, only 90% of it arrives in node J, right? One note here before we go to an example is to, to realize that in generalized network flows, we no longer have this guarantee of integer optimal solutions. Okay, uh, w because of these gains and losses, it's very easy to create fractions. For example, if I have, let's say, uh, um, five units flowing here, and there is a, 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 a yield 90%, five units times 0 0.9 will immediately give me four and a half units arriving here, and then whatever flows out of this node, for example, if it's a transshipment, uh, generalized transshipment example, then uh, whatever flows out of here is just limited by four and a half, and there are immediately fractions uh, appearing in the solution in such a case. So it's, it's, it's uh, unusual to have generalized network flow models with integer solutions, and we shouldn't expect integer solutions here normally.